Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Holy Calendar, the Sacred Calendar, or the Enoch Calendar, and adding confidence to what we understand about this calendar. Now, in a recent class, I went in and I created a perpetual Holy Day calendar. This is a calendar that will last us until they stop printing Gregorian calendars. In other words, as long as they're giving us a Gregorian calendar, if we have this perpetual calendar, we will be able to match up the dates and know when the holy days are supposed to fall. I was able to do this because we understand that every 19 years the calendar repeats itself. So what you'll see on the lunar calendar in 2021 will be repeated in the year 2040, 2059, 2078, and so forth and so on. But now, just like every time I produce a video concerning the calendar, the comment section always gets a little lively because there are many people who are trying to get an understanding of this sacred calendar. Man has done a good job of making this calendar obscure and confusing so that when the Father's people actually try to get back and understand this calendar, it seems to be quite difficult. And in this class, we're going to clear up one of the main elements of this difficulty. And that's concerning when the actual year starts. There's a lot of debate over this, understandably, because in this Babylonian slash Egyptian culture, we've distanced ourselves from the sacred calendar and from all things holy for that matter. But in this video, like I said, this is going to clear up a very particular point, and that is the exact start of the lunar calendar as far as what day of the year it starts. All right. So let's first of all, let's look at the perpetual calendar that I generated. I'll probably give you a link to it in the description so you can download it, print it off or just write it in your Bibles or somewhere important so we can keep up with these days in case we're not able to get a copy of a calendar that gives us these days but yet we are still able to understand the Gregorian date somehow. If you can't tell in my voice I don't have a lot of confidence that we're going to have a Gregorian calendar in the future so look for a class that we'll have coming out soon where we're actually going to use an old satellite dish in order to create an equatorial sundial that's right, on this channel, our focus is going in low tech. So we'll actually be using the sun to actually determine these dates, Lord willing, in the near future. But anyway, let's come over to this calendar and let's look at certain years that actually causes confusion on the Hebrew calendar. Those are years in which the new moon of the first month seems to fall in the winter time or before the spring equinox and understandably that has caused com some confusion because how or why would the first day of the first month actually start before the first day of the year but in some years is actually seem to be the case like in the year 2013 or the year 2032 and even the year 2021 that's why you're hearing a lot of discussion about calendars these days let me show you what I mean when we come in and we do a search for the spring equinox of the year 2021 we see that it falls on March the 20th now that's important because that's what the Gregorian calendar uses for the first day of spring and it is also where we get the understanding that the first Hebrew month, Nisan, always falls between March and April. Now, we're looking over here at a table of all of the months of Nisan from 2012 through 2021. And we see that most years, it's not a problem. This table is giving us the Rosh Kodesh, or the first day of Nisan. And we see in 2012, it was on March the 23rd. 
three days after the spring equinox. 2014 is on March the 31st. 2015 is pretty close at March the 20th. Well, in certain years, like in 2018, we see that it was actually on March the 16th, which is four days before the spring equinox. And people who are paying particularly close attention have a problem with that. Again, because they say, how could the first day of the first month be in the winter time? And so as we look down here in 2021, somebody's looking at this start being March the 13th and they have a huge problem with that. How can that be? It appears as though the first day of the sacred calendar is falling in the winter time. And a lot of people have come up with a lot of fanciful ideas about this. Some have gone as far as to say that the entire Hebrew calendar is calculated wrong and that Nisan of 2021 shouldn't fall in March but should actually fall in April a month later so that the first day of the first month actually falls in the spring of the year 2021. Others have gone as far as to say that the moon is wrong. This Rosh Kadesh from what I understand it means new moon or a new month and so when people look at it falling a few days before the spring equinox they're saying that it must not mean new moon it must mean full moon and so they're using it to support their idea that the full moon is actually the new moon and that the month is actually supposed to start on the full moon instead of the sliver of the moon which we know to be correct now, I must admit, I struggled with this, with all of this talk going on about it. I believe that the scripture has to be true and that we have to lean on it opposed to our own understanding. And the solution to this problem is actually extremely simple. But when I show you the solution, even those who have been working on this calendar will be convinced and their level of confidence in the Hebrew calendar will go through the roof. Now, of course, since we're talking about Enoch calendars, we need to come over and we need to look in the book of Enoch. Now, you hear a lot of people refer to the Enoch calendar or they'll call different things Enoch calendars. But to truly be considered an Enoch calendar, it has to follow the book of the luminaries as described in the book of Enoch. Enoch got this information firsthand from the angels who actually controlled the illuminaries and he wrote down their relations according to their classes, their dominions and seasons. I don't have to go into much detail for most of the people watching this video. Anybody who's tried to create or study an Enoch calendar have been to this chapter a hundred times I bet. But once again what I'm going to show is going to surprise most of them. Now, for you who haven't spent much time trying to understand this book, I'm going to tell you that it is simple, but it is not easy to understand this book at all. You see how it's talking about these gates and portals in which the sun travels through. Now, one of the verses that I want to draw your attention to is down here in verse 9. You see in verse 8, it's still talking about the first month. The sun is still transitioning through the fourth portal and on its way to the fifth portal. But you see here in verse 9 that it's saying, And during this period, the day becomes daily longer and the night nightly shorter. In other words, the days are getting longer and the nights are getting shorter. Now, for most of us, some of which until they watch the rest of this video this was always pointing to the equinox and and that occurs twice a year once in the spring and once in the fall but it is only in the spring in which the days become longer and the nights become shorter so this is why many people have agreed that the Enoch year actually starts with the spring equinox 
So when you think about how all of this works and how like over in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14 when God said let the lights in the firmament of the heavens divide the day and the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. These people of ancient times before they had computers or websites or stellarium or binoculars or calculators or anything like that. They were able to just use the stars, the sun, and the moon in order to tell what day it was. So think about that. With a simple little sundial, which could be no more than a little stick in the ground, they were able to determine the date of the equinox, indicating that a new year had started. And from that, they would have been able to determine the new moon day, the Sabbath days, and the feast days. Even a child could do that. And that's in fact what the children of Israel did. And that's what they'll do in the future. Praise our father for his word as well as his sun, moon and stars.